I had a young woman who was seen in a major cancer center and started on a new regimen for her breast cancer. And she had a horrifically difficult time with altered smell and altered taste. And although she was part of the nutritional program at that cancer center, no one had a solution for her. About three years ago, um, I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, which is a more aggressive form of breast cancer that tends to afflict younger women. Okay, uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer, um, it was pretty far advanced. I went to one doctor uh, who didn't stay my doctor because he said to me, there's 50-50 chance that six months from now you'll be dead. My mouth became so inflamed that I really couldn't eat anything. I couldn't swallow anything. The foods that I did eat were not really highly spiced or seasoned because your whole GI tract is a little tender. Many of our patients um, suffer from problems getting adequate nutrition during treatment and some of them are really unsure about what they should be eating and what is the most appropriate thing for them to be eating during cancer treatment. When we went to the medical literature to say who else thought about this, product, this problem, there's nothing there. So there was really no guidance for anybody treating these people to give any help to. If we can help to nourish them better, give them a little more fuel, a little more energy, we feel that they can handle their treatments better. It was probably about four or five months after I finished radiation that our chairman and CEO, Jeremy Jacobs, uh, at Delaware North Companies contacted me and he had been called from his physician friend, Bruce Moskowitz, down in Florida, who had just started this new effort to focus on cancer nutrition. Wendy uh, Watkins, who uh, who's just came uh, came off of having uh, breast surgery and starting in chemo and uh, and all, uh, was a person that that I thought would really fit in this with him. It was something that if I could challenge her with it, she could she would had the ability to reach into the organization and engage them and energize them in that direction. And it worked. As we thought about um, how we would tackle the problem of nutrition in cancer patients, we needed to better understand exactly what those issues are. And so we thought, well, what would be better than actually involving the patients themselves and asking the patients? Let's find out what we need to know from a patient's perspective. Let's do a survey. We were very fortunate. Uh, we were fortunate in that we were astute enough at the time to say we don't know how to do this. And if it wasn't for Jeremy Jacobs' generosity, we would not be where we are today. So we helped them actually craft a research study that was completed by about eight institutions, including Johns Hopkins, Dana-Farber, uh, Roswell Park, Mayo, among others. This project is very exciting. It's actually a survey that looks at cancer patients undergoing treatment. And our purpose is to really better understand um, food and beverage preferences. I think the thing that was most surprising about the survey was the wide variety of symptoms and causes for our patients to be unable to eat. From the survey we found that there were taste differences, smell differences that were ethnically different. Each specific treatment and cancer diagnosis had different set of problems that we need to solve in terms of taste and smell and maintaining one's nutrition. We do multi-center research trials all the time, but I'm not aware of any multi-center research trial that involves nutrition in the way that this particular survey involved. We're very excited about the, the chef involvement because chefs really know food and um, giving them a little bit of guidance from our survey, they've really stepped up to the plate and have developed some really creative different foods that I think our, our cancer patients are really going to enjoy. I was really thrilled to be a part of the project because I know that it's an important issue that really drops to the bottom of the list when we are um, identifying resources for our cancer patients. We put together some very simple recipes um, that, are, that are driven with good, wholesome, nutritious, 
and, and nutrient-packed foods. As a chef, as a culinarian, we're, we're the giving people. Um, we cook. Giving is a way of helping those that are going through rough times. You, you definitely have what you eat. You're made of what you eat. You eat good stuff, then you're healthy and you function well, all your system works. You eat garbage, don't expect your system to function properly. Very enriching experience for me, and I am fortunate to work in an institution like this. We were able to see what their food aversions were, what they were going towards, and it really kind of helped shape us towards what we needed to do as cooking professionals to try to provide the most nutritious meals. So it, it is critically important to us to start to develop a menu specifically for oncology patients, turning around what they need, getting that nutrition back in them, and also making it taste good. It seems that somebody would have come along before and said, hey, you know, this is, a, this is something that we should be doing. Um, and no one has until Dr. Moskowitz came up with this idea of saying, let's try to bring all the different cancer uh, institutes in the country together and come up with a sort of a, a through line for, you know, recipes and food. So it wasn't just the medical centers, the physicians who were important in this, nor the dietitians or the nutritionists. It was a helpful, uh, pairing of industry with medicine to find a solution. This is new ground. They, these are new projects. It, it took their imagination and their skills to do it. Now we're getting actually ready to launch a website which will contain about 100 recipes uh, created from some of Delaware North chefs as well as these institutional chefs um, that can be a resource for cancer patients to go to. Uh, we want it to, to be a place they can find recipes and, and tips on nutrition and and uh, to find other people in uh, situations like themselves where they can share ideas and thoughts and, and uh, feedback. Staying positive, surrounding yourself with friends, getting some exercise, getting plenty of sleep, not pushing too hard, not expecting too much of yourself, um, and putting your effort into getting well, I think is a smart thing to do. Uh, it helps hearing from other people who have gone through the same thing. The end goal of this project, I hope, is that nutrition will take a higher front burner across the world for any caregiver, physician, nurse, dietitian, pharmacist, that's looking after these patients. The fact that our chairman and CEO was asked to be involved in it, and I had the uh, privilege to get to actually work on this project, it gave me a chance to give back. Uh, which just makes me incredibly proud and, and, um, and thrilled that we're actually being able to launch this effort and uh, still very optimistic about all of the great things that will come beca because of it. In the beginning, I'm not sure I knew exactly what to expect, but I think this far surpasses what I could have expected from the project. I think what's been most striking has been the enthusiasm of the experts at the academic medical centers involved and the great support and enthusiasm of the experts in Delaware North, in the Culinary Institute, in several of the other companies that are involved in the project. I don't think we ever expected that. So I've been, I've been impressed and I've been astounded by um, the level of effort that has actually gone into the project by all of the parties involved. I'm very proud of what they accomplished and uh, I'm humbled by the fact that, that uh, that people visualize this company that way. I'm very proud of it.